Hi, this is Garth Holman from teachersfortomorrow.net and this is part of the remote learning series. This is Google Docs um, part three. So we're going to focus on adding links today, or excuse me, adding tables in this particular one. Um, we started by building a Google Doc, so I'm going to open that one up. And, and the tutorial we did last, we talked about adding images. So as the doc completely loads here, we talked about adding images through the insert icon. And under insert, we could, um, we could upload images from the computer. That's a screenshot or from the web. We used that. Um, we used the commands to take screenshots. And then we went into links. And with links, we did um, by a link, by a word, and by an image. We talked about that to make those work, you have to click them and then click the link again to get it to work and that that link works. And so now we're down to um, adding a table. So I'm kind of setting up some basic directions. I want the kids to read an article and then leave a comment. So if you think that through, I need a, a box for their name and a box for um, what they have to say. So under insert, we have table. I need an, a box for their name and for them to talk. And so I've got five kids in this class. The table's been made and I can grab this and drag it over because the name shouldn't be much. And so I'm gonna have Garth do it. Uh, my student Daisy, right? And Travis and maybe Anna. Anna's the student teacher I have. So now the directions say read this article and then leave comments. Well, there's no article. So I've got to build or find them an article. So I'm just going to use the basic idea we were talking about in a lot of these tutorials, the Crusades. And, um, wow, that didn't give me a very good uh, Crusade. Oh, I spelled it wrong. That's why. Okay. There we go. Um, you know, again, I don't care too much, so we'll just pick this. Let's suppose I wanted to read it. It's a Britannica encyclopedia image. So I'm going to have them read this. So I click the link and I copy it and I go back to my doc. So now I have an article I want to read. This is a skill we talked about yesterday. I highlight the words and I make it a link. Now the students can go read that article. They can click it, read it come back to the doc and write their reflections. Now, I'm not gonna write, I'm just putting gibbery in here in this box so we can see it expand maybe if this computer doesn't slow down. Now, as I keep adding this kind of text, if you look, it will expand the box and let me keep typing. As a matter of fact, I can also insert an image into this box. So I can search the web again just so we see that. Everything's taken a very long time. And I can add an image in, insert, and then my box will appear with an image. So I can adjust that size, and so this is kind of the idea. Now JC could come in and do his work. That's one way to add a table. That allows kids to work in certain boxes, and they could be working at the same time inside that box, so a collaborative um, table. Without going too much deeper into it, let's suppose we insert another table just for visual on how you might do things. So you had a table with three columns, right? And you have the kid's name, uh, you want them to find a link, so the link they used, and you want them to tell us three facts. Since these are directions, one thing people like to know is if you highlight just that row, um, you can fill that. And so you can make it a color. That's kind of nice to know so you can color code like your directions. Now red's actually hard for them to read. I guess I can bold my text and maybe that'll make it a little bit better. But that's just an idea too, that you can have a variety of things where they put their name in, 
they would put what link they used and they would tell us three facts about it. So now they're collaborating in a different way. This would be where a kid could do it and tomorrow night another kid does it and they just fill in the next box. The beauty of boxes is you can just hit tab and it will build as many boxes as you want. So if you need 20 kids, you can just keep clicking until you get your 20 kids in there. And again, a student could just come in and type. I used, um, well, I don't have the link anymore, so I'll just steal this link again. I'll copy that link. And now the kid could just paste that link in, right? By hitting the cursor, it's a live link, and I learned, you know, what they were, when they occurred, and why they occurred. You know, now, of course, I would want them to write more, but you get the idea. Next kid could come in, use a different link, and provide what they learned. So that's another way you can use tables. Um, tables help organize and keep a document kind of neat. You can make them look kind of pretty. Again, you could do this way. The names you could fill down to keep that a little bit so you can kind of organize and visually see what's going on. So that's it for this tutorial on how to um, how to add tables and how to use tables.